It's time for shenanigans, dare I say, scientific shenanigans. And in the process of making this, I created the most devastating implement you can imagine. A mace head that is also an unscrewable pommel. Rightly ending intensifies. <laughs> All right, so much has been said about flexible weapons compared to rigid ones. The pros and cons, and especially which one hits harder. I've seen and heard plenty of speculation, engaged in some myself. I've seen some tests, but none that compare exactly like to like. In an experiment that controls the variables and makes everything as even as possible. And that's the purpose of this little project. So I took this mace head and put a threaded steel insert into it so that I can put it either on the rigid handle or on the one that has a chain connection as well. And I try to make these as similar as I possibly can. So exact same overall length when they're put together. Correction, I had forgotten to trim this thread to make sure that it sticks out the same amount as the other one. That can mess with the balance. Not by much because it's a short piece, but a little bit. All right, now they're equal length. So back to the segment in the past where they're just slightly off. As close to the same weight as I can get, which is also why I'm gonna have to make this even uglier by attaching an extra length of chain to it to make sure that it's the same weight because chain is a lot more air, as you can imagine, so it's generally lighter. So I'd have to add some more here, but I don't want more than these two links to actually functionally keep everything together. So I'm just gonna zip tie them onto that to make sure that the weight is as close as possible so that all the variables are accounted for as much as I can. But first I wanna show you what it looks like and tell you about how they handle in direct comparison. So, this is as precise as I could make it. Yeah, for someone without professional woodworking experience, it's surprisingly difficult to drill a perfectly centered hole and uh, perfectly straight as well, even with a drill press. Speaking of which, I had to join two dowel rods together uh, because of the, the height limitation of my drill press because I said I wanted to make this as straight as possible. Uh, it's still not 100%, but is, it's as good as I can get it. And hopefully it won't break on impact. Hopefully. This is the dangerous part. <laughs> Just like with a sword pommel, it takes a little while. You know, with the fine threads that we have now, you know, what you see in the manuscript that tells you how to end him, well, not technically rightly, but quickly, they had much coarser threads than we do, so it wouldn't wouldn't be as slow. Anyway, and before you ask, yes, this is indeed legal here. It does not fall under the legal definition of either Nonchaku or Manriki Kusari or a morning star. For that, it would need to have spikes. So, yeah, <laughs> this is indeed legal. I double check that because generally I do not assume any semblance of rationality or common sense in prohibition. So yeah, we're clear. Okay, so it looks worse now, a little bit messy, but weight-wise, 297 grams obviously, versus 309. That's a discrepancy I can live with. All right, let's see how these feel. As usual, good old Bob is volunteering for this. Some might say he's being voluntold, but we don't need that kind of negativity here. Right, Bob? Okay, so for now, as a preamble to the actual test, I'm gonna compare subjectively how the impact feels. Uh, and also I'm gonna check if this just breaks on impact right away. I hope not, but we'll see. Okay, <laughs> the thread loosens up with every swing, but that's okay, I can just tighten it. Something to keep in mind for the actual test. All right. I mean, I know what a mace feels like, it's just this particular one.
Okay, so handling of course is different due to the flexible connection there. It does things that the rigid half does not. But I just want to see what the impact feels like. I see the cable tie at the top popped off, so I'm going to replace that. Even though it's probably not even really necessary because the chain should straighten out as it flies. But this to follow through becomes really important because otherwise if I just do that, boing, it comes straight back, which considering the length of the chain is not a problem. If it was longer and could hit my hand, that would be more of a problem. Although if it was even longer and the impact part of it was below my hand, that also wouldn't be a problem because getting hit by a chain is not a big deal. So in terms of impact, honestly, I don't feel a difference. Oh. Well, that sucks. I wasn't super confident in the bolt, which is why I reinforced it with the leather there, but those screws get pulled right out. So yeah, I'm gonna have to replace it with one of these. I already have two of them because this is the setup I'm planning to use and that's where that comes in. And then this is what the paracord is for. The elastic band goes up here. So that's what provides the tension. Then I can pull it back and let it snap forward like that. I've got it set up so that it's below parallel. In fact, I'm probably gonna put this higher so that this comes to rest even lower than that. Still have to figure out the height anyway. But the idea is that it's lower than the target itself because generally for a powerful, martially viable strike, you wanna hit aim through the target for the follow through. All right, so it doesn't just tap it lightly. Of course, I'm gonna make sure to always pull back to the same point so that it's consistent. This is obviously not a perfect simulation of how an arm would swing that. I mean, it depends on how you do it anyway. There's different rotation depending on whether you strike from the wrist, from the elbow, or from the shoulder. But um, the important part is that it's the same for both. We just wanna see if there's a significant practical difference between the rigid and the flexible setup. Now I don't have a sensor to electronically measure precisely the kinetic energy. I looked it up, but when I saw that it would be about $3,000 at least, I thought, nah, there's no way I can afford that. So I'm gonna to have to figure something else out. And I do have an idea that should allow me to quantify at least roughly the difference. So if you wanna see that, keep an eye out for the next video. I don't know exactly when it'll be up, probably in a few days, maybe up to a week. Everything has been taking longer than I would like lately. But uh, if you're subscribed, if you hit the notification bell and all that, uh, you may or may not see it, but you might just have to go back to the channel. By the way, if you're able and willing to support the channel by signing up on Patreon or throwing in a, a super thanks or whatever it's called, I would very much appreciate that because this whole thing has been rather pricey, all the materials and uh, I have to get some more tools to make it work and all that. So there's no way the ad revenue from the actual video is going to cover that unless it goes viral, which I doubt. Either way, any support helps a lot. Hope you found it interesting so far. Let me know what you think about the setup and uh, thanks for watching. Again, stay tuned.